Let's talk a little bit about working with dates in ADF's data flow expression language. So let's jump right in. On the screen I have a data flow already started. So I have my design surface open, my canvas is primed and ready to go. We're ready to start painting. So then I start with a source. Now my source in this case is not going to be the movie's data. I'm going to use a data set that has some date and time associated with it. This is the taxi cab data from New York City and it has pickup and drop off date times. So that'll be perfect to work with. Now when building expressions, you're typically going to use a derived column within a data flow so that you can create or modify existing or, or new columns. So I'm going to create a new column in this case. I'm just going to call this fun with dates just for this demo purpose. And then when you click on enter expression, you bring up expression builder. Expression builder is available in pretty much every transformation one way or the other. And this is where you design the functions that perform the intent of your data transformations. I don't have anything assigned yet to this column, so you see that it's going to create it right now with a data type of any. So nothing really defined for the data type yet. But let's start to just play around. Now, at this point, because I have my data flow debug session turned on, I can just type in anything. I don't even need to work with um, the existing data from the data set. I could just say current date, and that's going to send that command out to the Spark cluster that I'm connected to, and is going to uh, it's going to ask for the current date from every row. So even though I'm not working with the data, I'm not working with the input schema over here from the incoming data, I'm just working with functions. It's going to still read every row and just add that to every row. So if I click refresh or I click preview here on the bottom part of my expression builder, I can get live feedback. And this is coming directly from the data frames on the Spark cluster. So that's very cool. So let's say I wanted to, uh, that's the current date, and let's say I wanted to do something like look back a couple of days. So what you can do is sub days. And I can put in my current date. Uh, let's do, yeah, we'll, do, we'll just do this. We'll do current date. I'm going to work just without data for now. Current date, and let's go back um, two days. Actually, you know what? Let's go back uh, seven days so we can move back into January on this one. And we'll click refresh on it. And now we're back into January. Uh, now, let's start to work with the data that's actually there within the data set. So we had the date time, uh, as part of the schema, yeah, we had um, pick up uh, date time and drop off date time. So let's first just take a look at the data. So I'm just gonna click on pick up date time. And let's take a look at what we have. Let's do sort of a inspection of the data before we start to manipulate it and transform it. Okay, and I'm getting two columns coming back because I have the new column I'm creating in the column that's based on. And I'm just saying use the same value from pickup date time, so it's exactly the same in both columns. All right, so there we go. So we have year, 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 month, month, day, day, and then we have a timestamp. It's a 24 hour timestamp associated with that. Okay, so we did sub days. Let's try add days on this. Let's go ahead. So let's see, right now we're back in January of 2013. All right, that's fine. So let's add some days to that. Let's add days to that column value. And let's add by, um, let's add a, uh, let's add a whole year to it. Let's go ahead and add three. You know what, nah, I take that back. Let's do something smaller because we can do the other functions for the other uh, time periods. So let's just add three to the difference. So I'm just gonna, not going to tell you, I'm just going to let it play out and we'll take a look at the results here in a second. And so you see this is the um, new date and this is the original. So we added three days to each. Now the other date time functions you can click on expression reference documentation at the top and you'll be able to go to our uh, published documentation and you can see the different sorts of functions we have. So right now we're adding and subtracting a days. You could also Add months. So that's the reason why I picked this smaller number of days because I just wanted to show you add months as well. So instead of saying uh, 365, we'll do add months and we'll do 12 months. So now we'll see this up into 2014 now. Okay, we're valid and let's take a look at the data. All right, so there we go. So one year forward. Now, we can also do some uh, date time math. So let's say, let's go back to the incoming data. We have pickup and date. So let's say we want to say, what is the difference between when the uh, passenger is picked up and when the passenger is dropped off? So we will, we will just do a simple subtraction real quick here. And let's see what we get from this kind of quick and dirty math on date time. 
Okay, so something doesn't look right. This is saying this is actually giving me a date back now. I don't want a date. I actually want the difference. So what we have to do is we have to cast this. So I'm going to cast this to an integer. And now let's see what we get. I click refresh. So what actually we're getting is the number of milliseconds difference between those because those two um, columns are timestamp columns. So you're going to get milliseconds. If you were looking at a date column instead of timestamp, you would be seeing the results in number of days. So I have milliseconds. So the difference between January 1st, 2013 at 1511 and 1518 is a little less than seven minutes or that many milliseconds. So I've converted to integer, which means I can now divide that by, divide that by 60,000 now to be able to get the, um, the actual number of minutes. And the problem is I have this backwards. I'm subtracting the pickup time from the drop-off time. You actually want the, we need the larger value first. So we don't have a negative uh, number there. So I'm going to do that minus the pickup date time. Now we'll divide by 60,000 and now we'll see the number of minutes difference between the two values. And there you go. So now let's talk a little bit about formatting. So formatting is a little tricky because uh, you have to be familiar with the different format uh, formats for date and time. Now, uh, Dataflow uses the uh, Java, it runs on Spark, and so it uses the Java standard for uh, date time formatting. Uh, you can find that link if you uh, search that, if you do a, a search for Java date time formats, and I have a copy of it right up here. And so you can see the different characters that you can use. You can always just look that up and you'll be able to find the different ones. So that I can do something like if I wanted to, uh, let's say, take just the um, the, the, the date from this timestamp field. So let's say if we wanted to take, we do a two string. But, but first, let me show you something that you can do here in the expression builder too. So I can put a comments block around this so I don't have to, uh, so I can keep it here uh, visible to me so I can come back to it. What I just wanna do is I'm gonna show you that you can convert that timestamp to just the date. You can pull the different portions of that uh, timestamp. So I'm just going to pull out the date. So what I say is I'm saying two string pickup date time. I'm going to convert this over from the year first format they have to month month day day year 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 year. So it looks just like that. So that looks nice. The other thing I can do is I can pull out different aspects of that date as well. So I could say. Let's take this out and we'll go to the, um, oh, let's work a little bit down with the um, drop off date time. What I'm going to say for this, I'm going to say, give me the uh, day of week for that uh, date. Okay. And what that means is that January 13th, 2013 was a Sunday. And let's comment around this and let's go ahead and let's just do um, the day of week of today. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll do the day of week, that's fine. Current date. And today is Thursday. And the other thing we can do is uh, we could do uh, last day of month. It's kind of a cool one too. Last day of month. We'll do current date for this one. Now it's leap year and it's February, so this should be the ever interesting February 29th, or at least the 29th. We'll come back for this. All right. So one last thing I want to show you real quick here for working with dates in. EDF data flow. A little bit more interesting is I'm going to go to another source to another source down here. This again is my taxi data. But I'm going to use a window transformation this time. Now what I'm going to do is I want to show the difference between the current uh, um, the current row pickup date time and the previous pickup date time. So we can see what's the difference between the different times that a customer or a um, a passenger was picked up. So I'm not setting anything for my over. I am sorting by the pickup date time. So I have that sorted so I can say that the previous row, the lag previous row is going to be one, which would be the pickup just before this one. Range across the entire data set. 
real simple. Just do a lag so I can get the previous row. One is the number, I'm going back, of the pickup date time. And so when you preview this, now we'll just go into data preview for this. That is expression builder in the window. Transformation. We can just look at the full out. So now we can see the previous pickup date time. So in the window settings, I called the lag as previous pickup date time. So in my data, I now have on each row, I have the previous pickup date time. So the previous is, uh, let me go back over. Let's see. So the first one is null because there's nothing before that. So we start here. We have January 1st, 2013 at 104. And this one, this pickup is at 217, same date. So to get the difference, we can use the calculations and drive column like we were above. So we add a drive column onto this. And now for each row, we can always just say, give me the diff. I'll just call my column diff. And in the expression, we're going to say as, so we want the uh, larger value first, which is going to be the current pickup date time. And we'll subtract from that the previous pickup date time. Remember, we want to have this as a, an integer in, val in number of minutes. So we will say to integer that value. And then we're going to divide that by 60,000 so we can take away the milliseconds and just come away with a uh, number of minutes. That is the difference between those two. So now this is going to run. Let's go through the window on each row, uh, the, the lag calculation, and then the difference. And so the difference between when this uh, passenger is picked up and the next was 73 minutes, 11 minutes, 34 minutes. And so on. you can just see the difference right here when you subtract these two numbers. All right, so I hope you got a good taste uh, of how to work with dates in ADF Dataflow. Thanks for watching.